Okay, so let's take a quick general look at the ADSR envelope. We are shaping our sound with attack, decay, sustain and release parameters. And our sound is measured in amplitude of a certain signal over time. So duration of a song or just a couple of seconds or even milliseconds. And if we are sitting in front of a piano, for example, and we are pressing a key on the piano, this is when attack time starts because then you have a sound from your piano and our attack time starts followed by decay time followed by sustain level and sustain level ends as soon as our hand is leaving the piano key. The key is released and then what follows is the so-called release time bringing whatever sustain level we had before back to zero no sound. So in the beginning we have no sound, in the end we have no sound and in between we have ADSR. So attack determines the time we need to get from zero to our maximum amplitude. So if I'm hitting my piano really hard that attack time is very quick, so very short. Hitting something hard is a very short attack time. Like if we are playing, for example, strings and they are coming in very smooth, like a violin or some other strings, then you have a longer attack time. It takes a while until we are reaching the maximum amplitude of the sound. Once the maximum amplitude is reached, what follows is the decay time. And the decay time is another parameter in mostly milliseconds, could be seconds as well, that takes our signal level down from maximum amplitude to the sustain level. The level we are keeping as long as we are keeping on holding the note or pressing the key. This is another time parameter. So it might be a couple of milliseconds or seconds. And then we enter sustain. And sustain is very different from those three parameters here because it's not a time parameter, it's a level. It doesn't have to do anything with, with this time here. It could be taking for hours or sustain in the end is decibels. We are holding the signal on while we are still pressing the key. Once we're releasing the key, what follows is the release time, taking this back from whatever level we were playing back to zero. And sometimes you want to do that very short. Sometimes you want it longer to just, you know, fade out your sound smoothly. So if you want smooth sounds in the beginning, you have a longer attack time and smooth sounds in the end, you have a longer release time. If you want short and plucky sounds, what you do is, take attack time to zero, so you start right away with your maximum amplitude, for example like a kick sound or something, maximum amplitude right at the start, and then short decay time, meaning you just go tuk tuk, and then the sound stops. And such plucky sounds mostly don't have a high sustain level and they are very short or even zero in the release time. And pad sounds for example have a higher sustain level, have a bit of attack and they have release because they are more smooth. Okay, so take a look at this graphic, maybe print it out, hang it up your wall and keep in mind attack is the time we are taking from zero to maximum amplitude when key is pressed. Um, decay time follows directly after the attack. It's the time the amplitude takes to go from maximum level to sustain level here, still pressing the key. And then we have our sustain level, level of amplitude we are keeping as long as the key is pressed. And afterwards, uh, what starts is our release time starts as soon as the key is released and the amplitude goes down from the sustain level to zero and our release time will set how long that process is going to take. 
Have you ever had the feeling to be working with a synth without actually knowing what you're doing and how to achieve the exact sound you're looking for? In this course, we are going to learn sound design with Serum. We will learn how to create our own bass sounds, pads, plucks, leads and effects. And we will learn how to use it for advanced and state-of-the-art sound designs to achieve professionally sounding results. So let's get started.